in order to understand the gospel message this morning and the message that it contains, which is very important for us to learn and, and to live and make part of our lives, we have to take a look at the location, the sighting for the gospel reading this morning. Let's take a look at where this gospel comes from. Now, the gospel that I just read comes from the first chapter of Mark, verses 21 to 28. And that location is very significant. So when you look at verses 21 to 28, first chapter of Mark, what conclusion can you draw from that? There's a conclusion to draw. What, what is the conclusion? Any idea? Now think about it. The gospel reading, chapter 1 of Mark, and the entire chapter 1 of Mark is telling a story. And this gospel reading starts on verse 21 and goes to verse 28. With that in mind, what's the conclusion we can draw? Someone said it. We're starting in the middle of a story. Now the entire first chapter of Mark is a story. Now there are 20 verses before we get to verse 21. That's where I started. So we're starting this gospel reading right in the middle of a story. And when I read the opening line out of today's gospel reading, if you were really listening, you should have said to yourself, uh, what's he talking about? Let's take a look at verse 21 of the first chapter of Mark. Now verse 21, this is where we're starting. There are 20 verses before this. Verse 21 says, then they came to Capernaum. And on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. It, you should have been sitting there saying, when I said, then they came to Capernaum, you should have said, who are the they? What they? Uh, who are you talking about? You see, because we're starting right in the middle of a story. And when you start anything in life in the middle of a story, in the middle of a movie, it's going to be difficult to pick up what happened in, in the beginning up to that point. Now, it turns out to be that today's gospel reading is built upon last Sunday's gospel reading. And just by comparison, I want to show you these two locations. Let's take a look at last Sunday's gospel on this Sunday. Last Sunday's gospel reading was the first chapter of Mark, verses 14 to 20. Today's gospel reading, the first chapter of Mark, verses 21 to 28. So this Sunday, we're continuing what happened in the story last Sunday. And you remember what happened last Sunday? In order to get to the understanding of, of verse 21, then they came to Capernaum. Who are the they? Well, back in last Sunday, verse 16, 17, 18, I'll just refresh your memory. Jesus is trying to acquire his original 12 disciples, apostles. And in verse 16, 17, and 18, Jesus sees Simon, his brother Andrew, they were casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, come after me and I'll make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and their boats and followed Jesus. Now in verse 19 and 20, last week, first chapter of Mark, Jesus sees James and son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in the boat with the father and hired men fishing. And Jesus calls them and says, come after me. They leave their father Zebedee, they leave the higher men, and they follow Jesus. That's what happened in verse 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, today we start this gospel reading right in the middle of a story. So in verse 21, when I start off by saying, then they came to Capernaum, and you might have said to yourself, who are the they? Because we're starting right there in the middle of a story. Now we know who the they are. That they are Andrew, Simon, James, and John. These men came to Capernaum. Now I understand. Too bad I started right in the middle of a story. In life, that, that's always true. When you pick up in the middle of something, you're bound to be wrong. You're bound to be confused. You're not going to understand. If your spouse is talking to you, and while your spouse is talking to you, you're daydreaming, you're not really listening, then all of a sudden you catch yourself and she or he's been in the middle of a story and you're going to respond and you're probably going to be what? You're going to be wrong because you're going to respond to something you have no idea what they said because you've not been paying attention. You're picking up right in the middle of a story. When you only know half truth, that means you're never going to know the whole truth. And when you make an assessment about someone or something based on half truth, you're going to be what? You're going to be wrong. You're exactly right. You're going to be wrong. You've got to say to yourself, before I make a judgment on this person, before I make a judgment on this story, I've got to get all the facts and details together. In a court of law, before someone is convicted of any crime, what do they try to garner? All the facts, all the details, so good, sound assessment is made. 
If the judge says, well, just get a couple of facts, we don't need all the facts, and we'll condemn this guy, why not? Just a couple little items. That would make all of us concerned and worried. Because the truth sets you free, the whole truth, not half the truth, not partial truth. None of us want to be judged by someone who really has no idea what they're talking about. They might have heard something we did, but only a piece of what they did. And if they make an assessment, a judgment, they're going to be wrong and we're going to be condemned. Well, that's the interesting part of today's gospel reading. This message is never start something in the middle of a story. And we're going to watch this little video. And what I like about this video, it's a story about a fella who makes an assessment about a girl, but he doesn't know her whole story. Let's just see what happens here. That's a really pretty drawing you got there. <clears throat> That's a really pretty drawing you got there. Hey, listen. I was just complimenting your drawing. I'm not a creep that's trying to get at you or anything. Girls these days, you think every guy's after you. You all have so much attitude, it's ridiculous. Sorry if I offended you. I'm deaf. Until you know the whole story, don't be too quick to judge. That last line is the message of the gospel. Until you know the whole story, don't be too quick to judge. This gospel ring starts right off in the middle of a story. And so we're confused when you really listen to it as to what, what is the gospel ring talking about? Because we have to go back to the beginning to get to verse 21. But if we're content, I don't need to know the verse 20, first 20 verses, I'll make an assessment anyway, uh, then we're probably going to be wrong. And that's true in life. That young man actually didn't know that girl, clearly. But he made an assessment about her, but she was stuck up until he found out she was deaf. And then he realized he felt horrible inside because he was wrong. 
And how often in life we're wrong when we make assessments about someone and we only know a part of the truth. We're satisfied with that. We may draw conclusions and then we walk away and often we can destroy their reputations and destroy their lives because we didn't know what we're talking about. We didn't gather the entire story. When you know the whole story about anything, then a lot of things begin to make sense and conclusions aren't drawn that are wrong and negative. I think the message of the gospel, and I take that back, I don't think I rather I know. I know the gospel message is this. Don't be too quick to judge until you know the whole story. 